Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Gane. The fight this weekend could be one for the ages. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the body language analysis from Cyril Gane. All right, and actually we're going to reverse psychoanalyze. We're going to use some tells, some neuroscience that is presenting itself. Undoubtedly, okay, this is the thing that I'm really excited about here. Undoubtedly, to show you the belief inside Cyril Gaines' mindset. I will be showing you one end of the spectrum. We'll be comparing it to the other end. Biology doesn't lie. You can't argue that. I'm going to show you the data. So, if you do fancy putting a bet on, or if you're just interested in body language analysis, you want to get one over the competitors, you want to understand what's going on inside the room, yeah? you want to control people's behaviours, yeah? you want to improve the performance of your team, anything like that, or you just want to understand and get into the mind of your opponent, then sit back, grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy this short video. So, this particular example, is when Gain has been interviewed about his career, about his home life, but also about the fight with Ngarni, okay? And we're going to be looking at this, this, I was not. and this. Not too bad, not too bad. And reversing it, okay? Because usually, when we are so, you'll know if you're a Believe in Bruce subscriber. And if not, subscribe below to the channel, hit that subscription, give me a like, and also put your comments below to help for the algorithm. I'm also interested in your views and opinions, yeah? But we know from touching the nose that it's associated, remember body language gives two fields that we're interested in, comfortable and uncomfortable. We know the Pinocchio moment, all right? The Pinocchio is associated with lies, but more specifically, yeah, we can say that that person is uncomfortable at that particular time. And what we see here is not one, not two, but three unneeded, this is the key, all right? Unneeded. Touches of the nasal area and the upper lip area as well. This is a sign of uncomfortable in nature. And what we have is Adam Catterall, okay? If you don't know who Adam is, big BT sports presenter, always on the UFC, the boxing. <laughs> he probably does all the sports out there, to be fair. Runs a great, great show on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, I'll put the link below. It's called Fight Disciples. Uh, with another guy, I believe he's from Liverpool. PT editor, I believe is his social media name, all right? But Adam, fantastic interviewer, and he is interviewing Gain here. And what he says is something along the lines of the interim belt ne or the interim belt fight nearly got cancelled. It nearly didn't go ahead because of your wife being pregnant with your daughter. And then Gain, you'll notice as he's speaking about it, all right, immediately he touches his nose. If I'm not mistaken, the interim title fight yeah. nearly didn't happen because your wife was pregnant yeah. with the baby on the way. Yeah, because, yeah, on my mind. Now listen to the context that it's in, okay? He's talking about his daughter and he's talking about that his daughter wasn't very well. And you can see, so what Adam's done here is he's triggered him. He's got into, he has got into Gain's brain. He's controlling him. He's triggered him. He's got inside his mind. It doesn't matter how hard, how tough, how robust you think you are, by the way. We are all available to be triggered. If you've got a head and a heart, I could figure out quite easily how to trigger you. To either increase your performance or to decrease your performance, yeah? But by Adam asking that question... That's going to a part of the brain called the hippocampus, all right? Memory recall. There's a few other parts of the brain, but let's just stay with the hippocampus. That hippocampus, that memory, has then activated the limbic system, the hypothalamus, the thalamus, the pituitary, the adrenal, and it's resulted, all right, in him touching his nose. His nose didn't get itchy at that particular point, all right? And then he does it a little bit further on. Almost three, four seconds later, he touches his nose again. On my mind, when the UFC proposed that, I was no fuck. And then he goes on to explain it in a little bit more detail, and he does this with the upper lip. On my mind, when the UFC proposed that, I was no family first, man, because of course. I have a bad experience with, with the first one. Not, not too bad, because I was there. What we have there, ladies and gentlemen, is without doubt a baseline of gain. What his body does, connected with the neuroscience and body language, psychology, all coming together, that when he is uncomfortable with an uncomfortable thought, Boom, he touches up here. You can't deny it, it is there for all to see. All right, so we know that is when he's not feeling great. All right, lock that one in. That is boom, that is down, that is in, all right? Okay, are you with us so far? Fantastic. We're gonna go then to the other side of the interview when he starts talking about Ngarnu. 
uh, January, UFC, you versus Ngannou. So if he was uncomfortable, if he didn't have confidence, in psychology we talk about the four levels of confidence, the four C's, yeah? If he didn't have that belief within himself, then we know when he feels uncomfortable, we know when he feels uncomfortable, what we get is the touch. So I would expect if he didn't have confidence, if there was any disbelief in his own uh, behavioral patterns, his own capabilities, that immediately when Adam starts talking about Francis and Garnu, boom, we're going to get one of these type reactions. And what we, do, we don't get that. As Adam's talking, now you can't see Gain's face, but you see Adam's face mirroring, but again, which is a normal human to human behavior. When someone crosses their arm, we'll cross our arm. When someone leans back, we might lean back. Yeah? What you see is Adam's talking, Adam's face starts to light up, and what he's actually doing because he says it, he's mirroring that when he's talking about gain fighting and Garnu, and Garnu's getting. January 22nd is the next time we will see you in the octagon. You're smiling already. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> that good. obviously excites you. The op yeah. Yeah, he's actually getting excited about it. He smiles about it, as you can see here. And then also, and it's a brilliant position to be in, what we've got is we can see the full bodies of both Adam, the interviewer, and also Gain, the interview subject, all right? Now, if you notice, there is hardly any movement at all when he's talking about the fight with Ngannou. He's sitting there, matter of fact, his legs aren't bouncing up and down, he's not giving any self soothes to say, hey, come on, it's all right, we can do this. He absolutely has 100%, at least in this interview, confidence, yeah, about this upcoming fight with Ngannou. That could create fireworks, all right, absolute fireworks. But he's talking about it, he's matter of fact, and also, he goes on to say about, you know, Ngannou, the baddest man on the planet. And as he says that, he doesn't even flinch. I'm going to be in the top, the baddest man in, in, in this world after just three years in the MMA. Mm -hmm. That's that's really crazy. That's because as you say your words, that's a very powerful time. That inner voice. Do you control it or not? Are you going to perform or not? Are you in your individual zone of optimized function? That's what we're looking for. Chronic stress. If you stress someone out too much, they're not going to perform. Consequently, if you're not stressed enough, if you're not aroused enough, you're not going to perform to your best neither. But when he's talking about the, he's acknowledging Ngannou, his nickname, you know, the baddest man on the planet. Boom! Does not miss a beat. No negative associated behaviors or beliefs that we can pick up on. And then, interestingly, what I want you to do is just look at his eyes. Because when he said, you know, I've only been in here three years, I've gone up against the baddest man of the planet, it's a bit crazy. He looked down twice, all right, to the left hand side. Because he genuinely, and I think this is quite a humble experience to share, it actually drew me in. He's like, he's asking him, like, how have I got here? He looks down, he doesn't know the answer. But then, if you notice, his eyes shift. Fully, not just a little bit, across to the other side. When he starts visual, this is the key, when he starts visualizing and speaking about. That's wonderful. And, uh, and yes, after that, if I win, this is going to mean something for real for me. If I beat Francis, this is what it's going to feel like. If I beat Francis, this is what I'm going to do. Can you imagine the impact if I beat Francis? And the fact is that he's visualizing across here. He's now thinking about the detail of it. That's, that's like nuclear for confidence. That is absolutely nuclear for confidence. So what we've got here is two great examples of when Gain is underconfident, when he's uncomfortable, when he, you know, things are outside of his control, when he's talking about his daughter. Three examples in a short space of time. Nobody can argue about that at all, okay? That's locked in. When he's talking about Ngarni, he gets excited, he's smiling. There's no real movement at all. His legs aren't bouncing up and down. There's no self-soothes. And then when he goes on to talk about that distinction between down and left and then up and across to the right, what it's going to feel like after the win. Ho <laughs> ho Yeah, like the old saying goes, if you think you can or you can't, you're probably right. Ngarnu is in for an absolute barnstormer. If Gain turns up, I can't wait for the press conference tomorrow. Body language analysis on that is going to be on fire. So make sure you uh, hit that button for notifications as well. But the levels of confidence that Gain is bringing now, this is going to be absolutely nuclear. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're probably right. Again, 100%.
thinks he is right and the body language there backs up the neuroscience biology doesn't lie I hope you've enjoyed this quick video remember if you're interested subscribe below give me some love like the channel leave your comments and more importantly above anything else believe in Bruce remember to be kind to yourselves and each other and you're smiling already yeah. <laughs>